Yeah, so there are differences in the injury risk in men's and women's football. If we look just purely at the knee alone, <clears throat> you can look at many different statistics at many different levels. So, for example, at the collegiate level, knee injuries make up about 20% of all game injuries for the women. There are only about 12% of game injuries in the men. So that's just one example at one level, but you can see differences in many different injuries at kind of every single level from the youth all the way up to the professional and the worldwide level. It's a very good question. And we don't really know the answer as to why women seem to have this higher risk for tearing their ACL, but it's obviously not just one aspect. We know that women, when they jump or they cut or land, land in more knee valgus. So that's collapsing into hip adduction, internal rotation and knee abduction. That's likely a high risk pattern for tearing their ACL, but there's gonna be other things that also contribute, whether that's hormonal risks, whether that's game influences, um, such as match demands and cardiovascular pieces, whether that's uh, how women are brought up to play sports, starting at an early age versus maybe starting later, how they're trained and their physical development, particularly as they go through adolescence. We know that there's differences um, in men and women as they go through that puberty stage, kind of men developing strength more proportionally to at their height, whereas women tending to grow quickly and not develop that strength as proportionally. So there's all sorts of things that then go into this injury risk. We can't really pinpoint one thing. And for some individuals, it may be one thing more than another. So there's lots of different pieces that we have to look at that all contribute to this difference between men and women. Yeah, so there are definitely groups that are at a higher risk. Younger women in particular, um, women going through puberty are likely at a high, likely at a higher risk. Younger versus um, well, generally more experienced or older players. Um, there may be changes in neuromuscular development and neuromuscular control that happen um, that may be a little bit protective of ACL injuries and in, like as an athlete ages. People who have had previous ACL injuries are definitely at a higher risk for a new ACL. And the same goes for knee injuries in general, um, putting those women at a higher risk. And level of play is also going to affect someone's both the amount of time they play. So they're going to be at a higher risk just because they're playing more, um, as well as that intensity um, and the competitive level may also contribute to, to their risk. Yeah, so we've got great evidence to say that neuromuscular injury prevention programs or warm-up programs are really effective. So things like the 11 plus we know are very, very good at cutting down both lower extremity injuries, but really injuries across the board. So the keys to those though, is you have to do them. So getting player buy-in, coach buy-in, and really being compliant with those programs is really important. Developing good control, so good single leg stability, and that translating all the way up to cutting, pivoting, jumping, and having good strength that can be developed through those programs, those warm up programs, but also through other programs such as strength, a strength and conditioning program and the cardiovascular fitness is likely also important to decreasing an athlete's risk.